and welcome back. We're still here with day one of the International Wildcard Invitational. We've seen some awesome results so far. Let's have a check in with where we're up to as far as these seven games for the day are four games in. We've got one, a fifth one to play now as Chiefs will take on Hard Random. But you can see Sirius beat uh, Leon Hard Random taking INTZ down in an upset. Super massive there with a win over the Chiefs. And Cyclone Jokers, our last winners, taking out Detonation Focus Me with a very interesting little game there between the two. Felt like Detonation Focus Me kind of had things early. And then Cyclone Jokers, that famous counterpunch style, actually managing to come out and get them a win here. So curious to see how the rest of the games develop. You can see the rest of your schedule, of course, that we will round out with INTZ versus Leon and Surus versus Detonation Focus Me to round out our day with, of course, the Chiefs playing hard random in just a second. Of course, I am joined by Rusty here once again. Lovely to have you here, as, as always, Mr. Pi. Yeah. How have you found the game so far? Yeah, they've been actually quite good. Yeah. I think we've learned a lot about all of these regions. We've seen all of them play now, and this is the first time we'll see them actually mix it up. Chiefs losing their first game, Hard mm -hmm. Random winning their first game. And I will say it was a slight upset against the favorites, but there's a lot that we can actually learn from these teams. Yep, certainly have to think as you do see the two teams there on your screen. Chiefs will be on the blue side here for this one. Hard Random over on the red. Hard random. They're just such an interesting team, right? They, Because the way that game kind of ended versus INTZ was just really I thought strong. they were losing. Yeah, like, me too. The first 10 minutes of the game, I thought they were losing. I checked the gold score and they were ahead by 1,000 gold. It was very perplexing, I think, to say the least. But this side, they definitely know how to execute on things. When they make a decision, that's their decision. And yep. It's final. It was aggressive double teleport usage. You have the team there on your screen. Just everything kind of came together. It really was a team effort for me. Their jungler went off after having kind of an awkward yeah. start to the early, uh, early game. And like the Gragas play has just been great today. I feel like maybe we start to see the jungler shifting some of their priorities, but they had a beautiful tower dive in the bottom lane, I think sealed the game up for me. And it's just one of those things where they're a team that will always play together. They'll never say die. And they are tough to fight against because they will just never give up. Yeah, they're absolutely a hard team to fight against. And it all comes through their star-studded roster, mostly in that middle lane in Kira. He is a monster. Like, so, he is a kind of guy you just don't want to mess with. Yep, the Anivia and the Teleport looking absolutely clean and stellar as always there. But our opponents, of course, will be Oceania's own The Chiefs. We'll have a look about how the Chiefs are looking after their loss to start things off. It was a very quick first game. A super massive dispatch them, but different opponent now. They'll have to reset. We'll see if all those uh, all that training they've done in the regular yeah. season here locally is uh, enough to bounce back. Because again, Oceania typically has a very good start to the wildcard tournament. They've actually uh, started the opposite way this time with a loss. So it'd be interesting to see if all that bouncing back and recovery and that mental resetting they've been sort of building up for themselves as a team over the last 6 to 12 months, if that can help them here and make sure they come in with a game plan and clear heads. Yeah, and this is the best first step for the Chiefs. They do need to put that, you know, win in the right direction, mm -hmm. especially after going down a side that have been, uh, I'm not going to say too great at handling defeats, the Chiefs, but the thing is, this split, they know what it means to lose. Yep. They've done it a few times, just not with Swiffer. I don't remember how many times it was, but they've picked up significantly more losses in overall matches, not even just games, than they have uh, any year before. They lost a single game in the regular season, two if you want to count the finals there as well, uh, last year. So clearly a team that has been rebuilding a bit, definitely growing and maturing as a squad, and they'll have to show it here, because if there's one thing we can take away from the CIS side, this team is together, and the Chiefs will need to be together today yeah, to take absolutely. the win here. The Chiefs need to step up in this particular game. Being a side like Hard Random that took out the Brazilian team in they were coming into this the favourites. Now I would say we uh, pass the baton over a little bit. Just, you know, at the moment, gauge the strength of Hard Random one more time up against the Chiefs, who actually do need to step up for this. Yep, and again, Hard Random. It could be a great start to their tournament, to be honest. Like, a win already against a tough opponent. Obviously, everyone here is quite tough, but another win here against the Chiefs will put them 2-0 for the day, which is a very pretty spot to be sitting in after you've played only two matches of your wildcard tournament. That being said, though, be curious to see if maybe some of the... There was some... Weaknesses, perhaps, in Hard Random's game. Not glaring ones, mind you, but again, they're a team that wins together. If the Chiefs can maybe look to pick that apart and dismantle them and bring back their clean map play, the path should be relatively straightforward for them. But it is much easier to say that versus do that. Well, yeah, to me, the first thing was how good their teleports actually mm. were. And when they actually started sieging Hard Random, they did look like they were an unstoppable side. In saying that, the Chiefs' very slow-paced game might actually cater themselves better to the Hard Random team because they can just play at their own pace. They can control the map and play at their own tempo. Yeah, Hard Random are a team that definitely play at a very deliberate tempo. I think we've seen this a lot when we've seen them play previously. It's just a team that, you know what, they will almost always make the safe play 
rather than going for something a little risky. Even that tower dive that they executed well was more about strong execution after good setup than necessarily just going crazy and going all in for a big tower dive play. Like, you'll see them like approach objectives, back off, they'll always take the safe option where yeah. possible, and it's because when they do pick their moments, they almost always have exact everything lined up and they execute wonderfully. Yeah, the way that this team plays is if you're ahead, you don't play aggressively, you just get further ahead. Mm -hmm. Incremental... I guess, increases through objectives, through ward control, through any small detail that can increase that lead further, they will do. They won't just dive, unless diving is the best option at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly in that game it was, and we have to look at the Chiefs and their style. We've talked about it a lot in the OPL. It's very much objective focus and map focus, but a lot of the teams that are here at this tournament have strong objective and map play in their hands as well. I think players are warming up, is what I'm going to say. I think Spooks and... The bottom lane for the Chiefs, maybe not the best start to their series. Swipe had a rough time against the Echo with Daljan played an excellent game. And Swiffer, he was trying to pick things up a bit, but for the most part, it felt like the Chiefs just weren't firing together and yeah, sticking to the game plan. That's entirely what it was. I mean, we saw a couple of mechanical shows from yep. the Chiefs. There was the Rise 1v1s here and there. There was the Lucian 1v1 against the Ezreal. And I was looking at these things, I was like, yeah, it's good. Good signs. But the team itself just really wasn't there. Well, you can see... High spirit still for the Chiefs as they are on your screen. All smiles, which is important. Always uh, have to ensure that you keep up morale in any tournament setting. And again, the Chiefs certainly have learnt how to be better players as far as the outside of the game goes. And it has reflected in their recent results despite how strong the rest of the teams were looking locally. Uh, Matchup-wise, let's actually have a look though because Kira vs Swiffer has to be a fun place to start. Swiffer got his hands on Rise against Naru and actually made... Kind of showed up a bit there. Nara had a great Lissandra game, making maybe making mainly making team play, excuse me. But Swiffer is uh, starting to feel it again, I think, as far as being a big carry goes. Yeah, and the other big thing to me, however, is that Kira played the Anivia into That's the Rise, true. which has been defined as a good matchup for Anivia, generally speaking. I actually do quite like that matchup, and Kira, a very proficient Anivia player. In fact, most of the CIS region have been defined, <laughs> even in solo queue, as the one-trick region, because they're all very good at playing a single champion. I mean, it honestly sounds like a decent argument to maybe ban it away and just see what else you can get out of him. We've seen Azir being an exceptionally prior a big priority pick for a lot of teams. He's gotten through very few games, and there are even though there are some counters to him, people tend to want to leave it off the table. I feel like if nothing else, you've seen the interview from Kira. You know it's a big champion for him. Just take it away and see what else he can play. I mean, maybe don't give, don't go too crazy. Don't ban three champions and uh, try and give your mid laner Azir. But you can kind of like, I think you can make it work a bit here and just force Kira to show you another pick. Yeah, I actually, I think there should be an Anivia ban. I agree with that much and definitely think there should be uh, just the one of those two bans. Echo, the other standout to me mm. as well. If you're a Chiefs member, maybe get rid of that so that Swiper doesn't have as poor a time as he actually did last time around. Because honestly, they need Swiper to be firing. Otherwise, the team doesn't feel as right. And the bottom lane, you still need to have a winning 2v2. So to me, it's like draft priority, mm -hmm. ordering of their picks and bans. But the bans are most important. Get rid of the Anivia. Get rid of an Echo. Well, let's have a little look at uh, the bottom lane as well, because Raider had a decent game. Lucian, a very strong champion. He might get his hands on Civic Callista. Definitely Raider a player that can show up and has looked a lot better for a start to an international tournament. Uh, I love this bottom lane matchup, though. Lutrix versus Ejim, because there is potential for Bard to be contested as a pick. Lutrix's Bard was ridiculous in the last game he played. Mm -hmm. He pretty much solo carried the bottom lane, in my opinion. He Basically, I'm not going to say Solo carried the game, but he was the most valuable member to the team that won them the entire game because those ultimates were just ridiculous. Like He was hitting everybody. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think Bard is potentially as contested as most other mainstream style of supports at the moment, at least in this particular matchup. Ejim can play it. Mm. I wouldn't say that it's his most opted towards champion, but definitely to take it away from Likrit. I'm actually somewhat surprised that Ejim doesn't play a little bit more Bard. He's a very aggressive player. Bard's a great bull a lane bully. We know him and Radio like to play up in the 2v2s and try and really start to, uh, you know, just... We saw it in the last game, actually. They pretty much all in level 2 did good amount of damage, honestly, to the bottom side there, but couldn't quite carry it through. Again, it's going to be a lot about cleaning up the little things here for both these teams. It is important as you go through a tournament to just refine your play and adapt to what's happening in the tournament. I'm finally glad we're getting to see some teams play again because I think we'll learn even more after seeing them play initially about how they're going to approach the rest of the event. Yeah, and I think most importantly, the teams that lost their first game, we need to see how they actually adapt based off what happened to them the first time around well, and improve off of it. Here we are, two picks and bans here for our fifth game of the day. Callista and Bardo once again taken out. 
my new favorite champion. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Bardo. <laughs> you will be missed. For good reason. Yes, for you very will be good missed. reason. That was an impressive performance from the group. Civ and Rise, though, banned away by HR. So it looks like pretty standard bans for the most part here. Chief's a little bit more targeted, but nothing really sticking out. As there's the Echo ban, I think a good adaptation after their last game. Just such a strong champion in the metagame regardless. Yeah, and it helps Swiper, I mm. think, is the most important thing to take from this. Yeah, teams can play the Echo. I think we we know that Hard Random are entirely capable mm -hmm. of doing it. Swiper perhaps wants to be inclined towards the Nautilus or Maokai, given that the Echo has been banned as well. Could make life a lot easier for Chiefs. Certainly could. Tough to play tanks on the tank busters in your top lane, so smart ban away there. It's Twisted Fate actually taken out there. Another one of Swifter's champions will be targeted. Yeah. That is a great homework by the hard, the hard random side. Yeah, that's actually a very niche pick. Yeah. So I'm very shocked that they found that one and got rid of it. Not even sure Swiffer was going to play it. Well, there's the Maokai lock in. Big Swips has a nice smile on his face, though. Give me the tree. Going to feel a lot more comfy with the Maokai there. Now that Echo is off the table, is a flex pick, of course, as well. I don't want to have to mention it, but I do. There's Lucian and Trundle also locked in there by Hard Random. Yeah, we're going to touch on it every time, just yeah. in case. But, you know, Ejim is actually a support Maokai player. Entirely a possibility as Hard Random We'll go with bottom lane, as we're primarily seeing Trundles in that bottom lane at the moment. They've locked that one in. That's a potent 2v2. Two two. It is. Um, we saw EJ playing. Actually, they saw they Chief played playing this bottom lane last time. It, yeah. They did lose, but you could see they, they lost lane with it oh. against the tier Ezreal. That's true. That's what I'm saying. Uh. They didn't just lose the game. Of course, the Chiefs lost the yeah, game. Yeah. They 0-1, <laughs> but they lost lane against an Ezreal with tier. Very oh. confusing. It was a bit surprising. You know why? Dumble Doge, that's why. The Doge, yeah. No, he's, he's kind of a beast. Although, Litrix starting to make me a believer, so we'll see how he can do here in this one. Spooks, though, may actually will transition over to the Nidalee. Graves is available, but I feel like the Nidalee Kindred players never want to let go of Nidalee Kindred. Oof, this I like. Thresh Nidalee, the picks here for the Chiefs. Ejim going, I'm going to call it full tryhard mode. Yeah, absolutely tryhard mode. He'll even have Blood Moon Thresh. Yep. That's how tryhard he's about <laughs> to go. A legitimate skin for the pro player. But yeah, that is uh that caters towards the pit composition a little bit better. They've got non uh, committal engaged now. They can oh, go anywhere that I'm, they would like. I'm so excited. <laughs> but no Tom Kench, at least for now. We'll see what Hyde Random do in a select. And it could still be a top line trundle, like you said. There's definitely flexibility there. So if they want to move the trundle out of the potential support matchup or just give Smurf a nice pick into the Maokai. Well they know it's Maokai now. Yep. Trundle was taken from them on the flip side. Poppy could have been the other hover, perhaps, for the Chiefs, but they get rid of that flexibility. They secure themselves the team composition, which means that Hard Random get the response of, do we want Trundle up there or down here with our team? I'll still be mixing it up. Two picks to make here, don't forget. Only two seconds left to lock them in. Time Kench is one. Graves will be the other. But the time will actually make an appearance here, and I still don't know who's top and who's support. Yeah, they've locked in Tom Hanks. It's weird. <laughs> I, d I actually like Brawn better. There's yeah. already a Thresh and a Nidalee secured for Chiefs, and it would have diffused a lot of that strength. I mean, Raider, he could default to an Ezreal, given that the Lucian's already locked in and there are two AD carries banned. I mean, that's been like the, the next string of AD carries, right? But again, that's why Bard would have been better. So on the assumption that Raider could play that champion, we'll see what he goes towards, because it's entirely possible that the Chiefs just say, you know what? We have a Nidalee Thresh Maokai, let's just go Varus Jin. Ooh, that could be fun. And they did play, yeah, Nidalee Varus Jin. We've seen that comp already from uh, uh, Lion Gaming. Made it look good, but couldn't quite close out there. Up against the Sirius Gaming. 10 seconds though. The Chiefs, they do have to make some pretty important decisions. There's the Jin. It's almost like you're an analyst, Rusty. Ooh, Azir though is left open, I'll take that instead. Yeah, they picked in Azir. The one variance, I will say, of course, they don't need to go for the Varus by any means. They've got Nidalee for poke, they've got saplings as well to start proccing things, and the Jin is a strong champion in its own right, especially with a Thresh. The kill pressure they've got there is actually quite potent, but you know, we're still missing Kira as the final pick, and he knows that it's an Azir. And the question to me is, does he just go back to Anivia? Do we play the control mage mid lane? I mean, Kira knows his matchup, had to expect the Azir likely as well. Did drop actually pretty late into this draft, I will say. So curious to see that 
Chiefs were able to pick up Azir relatively late into the draft, but that's what I like about the current state of Azir, though. Yep. Is that there's defined things that beat it at the moment, so actually quite variable, and it has to be flexible with its pick. <laughs> Kira, he actually does do it, just goes straight back to the Anivia. I mean, look, hasn't lost on it yet in this tournament. Might as well keep it up. <laughs> Great stat. Yeah, 100% <laughs> winner on Anivia in the 2016 International Wildcard Invitational. I got you guys. One game wonders. <laughs> I mean, it's a comfort pick. Yeah, it's absolutely. probably fine. Yeah, this is like, again, I alluded to hard random and CIS as a region having a lot of one trick players. Mm -hmm. This is no exception. Kira is a beast if you give him a Nivea. So, very surprising. I actually expected it to be banned in place of the Callista. The other two, though, I will say were very expected bans the Echo and the Bard. But once again, they, they sack that ban. They actually succumbed to the fact that it was probably going to be that Anivia, and they picked the Azir to counteract that almost in anticipation. Yeah, it's one of those things where we're probably just going to get a very farm-heavy, control mage-oriented mid lane. So it could be there for a while on the Wave Clear Wars, because neither of those champions wants to give up their mid turret ever. Yeah, never. There's just got a lot of Wave Clear, honestly, between the both of them. I do think that Azir has a slight range edge, mm -hmm. and you can't afford to use your stun here as Anivia, because if it misses, you're probably just going to take a Thunderlord's proc to the face and probably lose that trade. Level 6, though, a lot of things change. Certainly do, but uh, we are going to get a uh, summoner matchup that's becoming increasingly more uh, standard here in the mid lane. It is, of course, whenever you have any sort of aggressive mid laner, you need to take cleanse because you don't want to get uh, locked up and died. A uh, die is a control mate. <laughs> has died, especially as Azir. But Kira, I believe, has teleport once again here. Did make surprisingly uh, effective use of it on the Anivia, was able to TP in and uh, make some stuff happen. It's not quite the same as like uh, a Rise maybe or a top laner that's a tank that can come in and have an immediate impact, but Swiffer is effectively forced to take cleanse because of the matchup. Kira again, double TP for hard random seems to be something they're very comfortable with. And we saw this be the unfolding of the Chiefs in their first game, not having a teleport, not being able to match where the opposite team was going in the Turkish team last time around. I think the major contrast to me is that it's an Anivia. And so, whilst the Anivia has the teleport, generally speaking, you won't see an Anivia side lane push and yeah. actually be a threat in a 1 3 1. So, it will still be grouped with the team, a, a little bit more predictable. Ooh, Swift actually goes for heal. So, kind of the same theory, I guess, but does have a defensive summon over the teleport. Kira, though, does have that TP. Hard random will take two into battle once more here. So, we're on to Summoner's Rift for this one. And Jin, a champion I'd almost forgotten about. I do apologize, Radia. That's nah, all right. Got you, got you covered. <laughs> I was like, "What's up? what's after Ezreal?" It's like, "Oh, it's Jin." Curious to see how this two v two works out because these are aggressive AD carries. But you know, Radio and Ejim, particularly with this uh, with this uh, lane composition, do want to get aggressive. So I think Hard Random, knowing that, is going to look to dodge it. See how Licorice does on the Tom Kench. Does not seen the light of day too often, but definitely a niche pick. Yeah, you don't often see players. Tom Kench support unless they are avid Tom Kench support players. So it's a very rarely seen thing, naturally. But if you make it work, it's actually overbearingly this powerful. This is so rude. <laughs> like oh, has he got W? Eat the minion. I hope so. Eat the it's minion. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> is he going to get it? Yeah, oh, my God, it. he got it. That is just gross. You can't afford to do that against the Tom Kench Chiefs. You have to be there to like see the lane swap happening. Yeah. He will do that every single time. Like 100% of the time, you'll see a Tom Kench just waddle in. Look at him, waddling. He'll take everything you have. And that's exactly what happens. Spooks loses the big wolf. Huge burst of experience and gold for Licorid as well. I will say, though, it's still a lane swap, so the experience doesn't mean a lot to the Tom Kench. What it does mean, however, is that he's got extra gold. So he might actually get his gold generation items up quicker. A little bit more efficient in the support role in comparison. But it also puts Spook's leaps and bounds behind the Graves. Yep, that's pretty much the worry there. As we do have three members move in from hard random, they are going to start this push. And certainly something that both these teams should be very practiced with is a standard lane swap. We'll see how they manage. Because it is the little things that matter. But for the most part, I expect both these teams to have this all sorted out. And Chief's just going to start their push pretty much around the same time. Except everyone is up to scratch. Yeah, you know things are going pretty poorly when your top laner has the same CS as your jungle laner, lane swap. He's <laughs> not in minions. But the Chiefs, naturally, they are going to match the lane swap. We'll see how, I guess, effectively the turrets do get taken down. 
slight advantage in experience as well, the edge for Licorice. Able to clear waves very effectively as well with that Devour. Well, Kiri's just stunned again. Slipper trying to capitalize, but maybe not enough mana for a second Q. Kiri getting chunked though. Ooh, almost an egg. Yeah. There's no mana though available from Swiffer, so the trade of, I guess, utilities that both of them have. It's going to force his teleport. But he has a teleport, yes. right? Yes. One has a heal. Swiffer's put the wave in a good spot, but I'm pretty sure he's, yep. Yeah, so it's not a good his spot. His spray's about to get yeah. rained on. And that's so, okay, so that's a very interesting thing that just happened because, like, you would look at that and you'd say that was a mistake from Swiffer because he has to hold the wave or get the minions to push it so that he couldn't teleport in. But Kira would have just teleported to the minion he was hitting. Mm -hmm. Swiffer would have been out of mana and it would have actually just slowed down his walk back to the lane anyway. So recalling losing those minions was still the right decision. Yep. Does cost him though. As you can see, Kira a little bit ahead in CS, although Swiffer will come back and I think be able to take a very, very slight edge. Swiper though, happy times in the bottom side. Look at all this CS he's getting. 12 to 4 right now versus Smurf. He's going to make his way down. Level 2 to level 3. Much better start here for Swiper as Spooks looking mid lane. Just chucks a spear and leaves. Just giving him a how you going. Yep. Hey, yeah. I'm still in Italy to see you know. It's the wandering wave. This, this is again the problem, and I said this at the start, is if Kira misses that stun, you just get out traded in the mid lane. Oh, Spooks looking for bottom side here. Oh, Swiper couldn't quite coordinate that one together, but Smurf's still quite low. Swiper going to chase him for the damage, but stay also on the side. Making sure to keep them at bay. Level 5 as well for the Graves. Yeah, it's a large Graves. Yeah, that is a massive Graves. The thing is, level 2 for the Trundle is why the pressure was down there from Spooks on this Nidalee. Because the collective level advantage definitely still evens out. And they can target the one who has no health. But no Spears able to connect. Yeah, uh, usually you'd love the Marco Nidalee set up there as uh, Spooks, but couldn't quite coordinate yeah. that, I don't think. Twisted Advance kind of locks them down in a set area. Should do. You would imagine. Doesn't work at that time. We'll pop ourselves back in the game. Oh, Smurf turning it around. Huge chunkage out there onto Swiper. Cannot underestimate Graspy Undying as Radio getting in for the damage. E Jim Damn. wanted a hook, but this Jin, huge damage onto Miracle. Yeah, it's actually a lot of damage. The trade was nice. And the added sustain that he also has just from having that cull there, even the potion advantage. Probably going to imagine that Radio and E Jim will be in control of this lane, so would not be surprised to see the Graves come up there and. Try and put some pressure down to even things out. And that's actually a good opportunity for Spooks to catch up. Yep. We thought maybe that was the thing that was missing the most from the lot first game the Chiefs actually played. got a good spot in oh, here. Oh, good Lance in, but it might not be enough here. Good play from Egypt, but he's trying to keep them out Level of the way. Six. Snare not quite there, but there's actually no tower to go to. Grave just goes, takes him down with the ultimate. And that's first blood onto Egypt. And you'd have to say that was predictable. Oh, Swiper also level 4 is coming in, but it's a little too much here. Smurf's going to try and chase him down. The grass will proc here, but Spooks are going to try and turn things around. Pounces forward, but Graves is just so strong right now. He's level 6. Like, Spooks is level 4. Swipe is level 4. Theos can, like, 1v3 them happily, and Ki Kira's here. Yeah, Kira's here. This is a problem. Chief still no tower to run to. Kira gets the wall. He perfect onto Swiper. Gets a stun down as well. He's going to land in. The auto's great, and Kira makes it look so easy. He's a mechanical god on this bird, honestly. Swiffer finally makes his way up, but it's too late. And the Chiefs, they're just crumbling. The constant pressure that has been placed down by hard random. This comes up trumps as we are super zoomed in. Yeah, Hello. And again, to think that so much of this started just from Lic Licrit's like initial invade. Yeah. Like it's a small thing that surmounts to a lot. And once again, two levels behind in the jungle roll is a very big deal because that was a quick six from yeah, he, Steos. Yeah, he's needly too, like it's not like he jungles slowly. So impressive stuff certainly there. Also a predictable gank. Like, I even said that he was going to gank. Does he has nowhere else to be? Well, Swiffer's still trying to pressure out mid. Kira actually low on mana. Swiffer does not commit, though. With the egg, of course. Kind of making sure that is uh, not the best idea. Smurf and Swiper again. This Trundle's starting to push his weight around in this lane also. He also is an experienced lead, by the way. So, although Swiper does not hit uh, five. And Spooks around the dragon is looking in for something, but still playing catch up here on Nidalee. Yeah. A lot of minions were crashing, however, both Raider and Swiper are going to get a large stack. And probably find themselves a little bit ahead in farm overall. So no big losses here for the Chiefs, but still two big hiccups that cause a thousand gold 
Is the difference is they've got a hook. New hook onto Lucrit. Swiping gonna lock him up as well. Damage is good, but the Grey Health will pop there. Now Smurf gonna try and look to see if he can turn things around, but Time Cancer is dead. Swiper able to pick up that kill. Yeah, they get an easy pick. That was a pink ward bait as Swift is not actually in the best position. Oh, red buff graves. It's pretty gross. Does dodge the Q though. Has to push him back in. And now try and force him out, but the hook's not there for Regim. Oh, Flay almost. A good attempt, but Graves gets out, just pretty much walks away. So for what it's worth, that was very clever from Swiffer. Actually yeah. saving his spells and just forcing him towards the team. They don't get anything out of the Graves. It was the right idea, and just not able to execute on that. So very cute. They do get themselves a pick back on the board. The gold lead doesn't matter, it doesn't really exist. We actually settle from what was an unfavorable start. Yep. We'll see how the rest of the game shakes out, though. Because... Right here is all alone versus Smurf. Level 7 on the Jin with a BF sword, so actually probably fine against the Trundle right now. Graves is dancing. Yep. Making sure the blue buff goes over. Nice donation there as Kira swoops in with a stun. Able to collect that one for himself. He even knows exactly how much damage he was going to do. I wasn't sure that he was going to get that. Well, Kira certainly knew. Swiffer though gets his blue. And yes, he's named after Death Note. Yes. For anyone playing at home. He has a daughter named Kira too. He does. More fun fact to the honesty. He's in Italy in the game too. Well, I believe those fun facts changed. <laughs> Dragon started though. <laughs> for hide random. No vision here for the Chiefs, so this should be an easy pickup. No Devourer stacks this time to worry about though. So that he's going to go over. And they've actually swapped Radio back, so we're going to kind of reset for these standard lands. Normally you do this for Dragon Control, but uh, hide random already on top of that one. Able to take that objective down. Yeah, absolutely on the ball with that one. And I question if the Chiefs changed themselves or if it was hard random enforcing it that was responded to from the Chiefs once again. Very reactive play. And that to me is a uh, just a big question mark. At what point do we find proactivity? Even the kills that they were getting onto Lickrit earlier there when he went for the ward was reacting to that ward about to be taken. And Radio forced to use the heal. He's in there with the lantern, but... It's just a free summoner there. It's hard random commit the culling and really nothing else. Spooks still getting chased down with the jungler. Has to flush that stun. And this Graves is doing so much work in the early game. Yeah, honestly, the Graves is doing everything for them right now. And Ivy is very good at capitalizing on the aggression from the Graves and consolidating that further. But Spooks does not exist. Now, he is not a member of this map actively participating in anything right now because the Graves is keeping him there. I've seen it so much. He's even baiting the Krugs. Oh, good juke there from Miracle. Another great juke around the hook. Oh. I think they're going to get it. Just has to walk in. Yep, Q's in there. Dodge rank at the end of the line. We'll take it. Egypt, actually. Because they're going for the tower dive. Yep. And once again, Graves. Just making play after play. Yeah, he's, he's uh, definitely making a lot of plays on this map right now. The proactivity is definitely paying off for these guys as uh, we can take stock of what happened. Yep, they got the double, went for the dive. Kira actually getting chunked out in the mid lane there, but does not get egged, I don't think. No, he still has his passive. Swiffer, again, he's trying to be proactive. Both him and Swiper were ahead in their lanes at some point, but bottom lane started well, but the jungler's just stamping his foot all around the rift. Everywhere the he goes, people die. The same story every single time right now, though, for the bottom lane of mm -hmm. the Chiefs, is they start fine, and things just change quickly. As Swift oh, is Swift in caught by a stun. He's going to surf all the way around, but that E almost kills him. Smurf's going to slum down with the pillar. Swiffer does have his summoners, but he's trying to save them. Only crits here. He's going to clean him up. Swiffer knows there's nowhere to go, and Graves, unfortunately, is the one to get another kill as a result. Yeah, Graves getting that next kill. They didn't want to give it to Tom Kench, yeah. but he was trying to force that to happen, Swiffer. So naturally, the resource is given to the right party. Jungle items also completed. You're now looking at Chiefs and saying you need to get something done quick. On well, this Graves is going to run away with the whole game. Spooks is caught up in experience though, so that's good news. But 3-0-2 on the Graves with a Warrior enchantment already done. The items might look even now between the junglers, but that will change quickly. And Graves, man, definitely not too bad on his own, but it's level one. he scales well. Like, level 1 has been the disaster of this entire game mm. so far. Chiefs have just spent playing catch-up trying to even just bring it back slightly for them. Nivia is going to scale and hard random are happy in the position that they're in at the moment. Oh, just chooks everywhere. Eden can't land that hook. Crab goes over to hard random as Smurf actually picks that one up for himself. And again, it really just seems to be that theme. 2,000 gold behind. Still playing reactively. Miracle might even take this tower. Let's take him tower hits. Oh, that one's dodged up. Good eat there from Time Kench. 
Just saving a bit of his AD carries Such health. Such an amusing champion. <laughs> It should depends on what depends skin. on what side of Tom Kent you are. I think the yeah, Tom Kent true. player and team, it's the best time ever. Playing against him is like actually the worst feeling of all time. Yeah, every time he hits, I was like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it should give him a gentleman skin, by the way. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So he can do like the Chogath norm. Oh, twisted event cancelled. That looked really fun. That did. <laughs> I don't think Swipe <laughs> is going to be too happy about that one. Well, Spooks is here to try and defend this tower, but they're not done because uh, more than enough health still left over, thanks to Tom Kench swooping up his AD carry, making sure he's safe. And pressure just keeps mounting in all three lanes. Hard random, just continuing to get an edge here in the early game. Culling even down onto Swiper, that's good damage. Yeah. Levels up in the middle of it and still takes about 30% of his health. Yeah, the pressure's not going to end anytime soon, but actually a great... Oh, play not oh, there for hit the hook. Does yeah. hit it. Snares in there as well. Kill over to Radia. That's a good catch as they shut down the Graves. Yeah, absolutely a good catch. But that was also just a very deep Graves that they managed to find. It won't present any available objectives for them. In fact, they'll just lose this bottom lane turret during that pick. Unless they rotate down here, which they all... He needs to get in the belly. Oh, oh, oh he gets in. But oh, Flash has fought. Damage I think he it. it off. And now Spook's going to move in for it. Ready there with a the snare. The Goten Call's going to go up. Miracle's going to die. Liquid's probably dead here as well. Swiper sapping magic to make sure he stays alive. And the Chiefs finally getting some kills. They absolutely do. Bringing it back for Chiefs. That was very cute from Hard Random. Trying to get inside the belly of the Tom Kench and get to safety. But Swiper proactively dealing damage to cancel that. And they both go down instead of just the one. Good amount of value there as the Chiefs give two kills to Radia, I believe, in the last few exchanges. Smurf, though. Top lane Trundle. Always very different. Smacking through this turret. Not sure Swiper can save it. He's going to try, though. Yeah, might. no way. Trundle just takes it and walks away, although locked up now. Swiper might be able to Spooks buy enough time for someone else, but here's Swiffer in mid lane. Once again, the Graves getting aggressive. That stun missing is good. Otherwise, wow. Swiffer would have died. In fact, he might die anyway. Egypt goes in, but the ulti's already buffered. And that's going to be yet another kill. Egypt actually might even die from this. Watch they the dive spear, two though. turrets. Snare in again, but Spook's trying to get in for it. Chief's now TPing in. They're going to try and make something happen. But Kira flashes out of the way. Graves actually went over to the blue buff and he starts it. And both members of Hard Random get out of that situation. That was a legit flash from Kira if ever yeah. I have seen one as well. I don't know if the pressure's stopped from Spook's here, but I don't know if Spook's wants uh, that. Kira don't think he can win this 1v1. Hex drink is procced, but Graves is just too strong at this point in the game. Yeah, and you can see that. Like, he just straight dove Swiffer in that middle lane. Always running out of mana, Swiffer. Lots of questions to be raised. The Azir is trying too hard to match the pressure that Kira is putting down. Blue buff control actually quite important as it's being taken away. Well, once again, bottom lane does go down to a miracle who just revisits after all the pressure that Hard Random have on the other sections of the map. It just feels like Chiefs can't stabilize everything at once. They're always putting out some sort of fire, and yes, they're playing much more proactively this time around, but Hard Random still always the ones with the answers. 3,000 gold up as they look to start their second dragon. Yeah, I'm not even sure it's proactive, to be perfectly honest with you. I just think it's they're playing very recklessly now, Hard Random, and it's the easy responses. This is very cute from the group. <laughs> That's kind of crap. Yeah, he was having a bad day. He's real trapped. Gets a 2-4 on there. Tom Kent's going to go back. Stereo soup. And go ahead and recall. Smurf, though, starting to become a problem. The split pushing is uh, pretty much there. And this is uh, one of those key differences. Everyone looks at Trundle. It's like, this champion's so great. But I know you do the mental <laughs> check whenever you see him. Like, is it top lane or support? Because it makes a big difference. Yeah, that's a top lane Trundle. If ever I've seen one, he has a Titanic Hydra. And he's not going to leave that top lane unless he absolutely has to. And even then. Which is the rule of thumb, yeah. And even yeah. then, he <laughs> might not press the teleport button because he just wants to take a turret instead. Trundle special. Spook's looking for someone. Doesn't find it. Snare's good. Can't follow in, though. A little too dangerous because they got no vision. Really struggling to hit spears, Spooks. I actually don't think I've seen one connect yet. Yeah, this whole game. Skull's a little uncalibrated here for the Chiefs. Ejim just throws out a hook, hoping someone's going to walk into it, but not this time around. And speaking of calibration... <laughs> the Chiefs, however, I will say they're holding their ground. And this is the difference between Hard Random and the Turkish team. Super massive. Is they can probably hold their ground here, the Chiefs. Yep. And it's very difficult to execute on a tower dive. 
Whereas, I mean, that Turkish team just said, we're doing it. Yeah, I mean, the pace that that team played with was just... It was breaking. jarring. It was almost. The Smurf still not done. Hardware and them, though. They'll definitely play the slow game. They'll be happy to. Got a decent position as far as the composition goes. Just happy to scale up here. Smurf, as we said, continuing to cause problems. But Swiper able to match him for now. We'll see if that changes, especially when Smurf hits level 11. Kira, though, going to move himself top lane, actually. Got to some farm to collect. Finds a pink ward. Flies past it. Probably get it on the back end. And then oh, flies he does back, stay yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, follow up. Commit. Pounces in. Ready with the curtain call. Graves dodges the other bullet. Spear dodges as well. Crit bullet. Not there. Harold. Good meat shield work. He could have made Harold angry, actually. That would have been interesting. Look at him. He was stuck in there for a long time. They actually probably could have killed him. Yeah, just chilling out. Didn't have the quick draw cooldown, but... Gets his and saves his ultimate, I guess, to not get over the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Man, Chiefs could have probably afforded to be a bit more aggressive with that play there. They don't opt into it at all. I think that's maybe been the thing. Wow. Not been super aggressive this whole game. Still sort of finding the feet, I feel out. like. Yeah. They're actually just hanging out. Like, that's what it is. They're just chilling. Hoping they get to the late game at the moment. And it's it's not like they're not doing anything towards it. They are still controlling vision well. They're trying to make picks. They're in the right places at the right time to stop any lead from growing further. And every time I look at Graves, he's in the mid middle of a biff. Yep. And he's usually winning. And yeah, he's pretty much always winning, yeah. <laughs> Got red buff, level 11. Plus the more of our Mordi has already finished. This Graves is very large already. And it's like the rest of his team is suffering as a result. Kira, though, going to start his own blue buff. Should be a pretty easy pick up here for the Anivia. Has just about enough mana to get it cleanly. Once again, Kira, good calculations on the champion. Smurf, though. Swiper's just like, guys, I can't really do anything. I'm not losing, but I'm not really winning. That's what his job is, though. Yep. And then get a teleport in later. Oh, hook. Could you, oh, good quick draw, sorry. Even right. better, Sweeper. To actually spot him as... Another spear hit. Spooks. He's trying to find something here, but I don't know, I'm doing a nice job just invading the jungle. They'll clear the pink, though. Chiefs able to get Vision back in their own jungle. But it does still, it does still feel like they're playing from behind. Not just obviously in goal, because that is a lead that Hard Random have. This is the combo. Oh, good play. Hook not there, though. Miracle yeah. gets his way out. He picked a direction, he yep. did. He was aiming for the Duke. And the Duke was in the opposite direction towards the turret. Perhaps could have hit it, but it doesn't really matter too much. But what we saw there was in the start of what the Chiefs' composition is capable of doing. If they ever hit a spear, or if Azir ever gets a Sand Soldier to connect, they can follow it up with Raid SW. And then it's just all in on that one target. And he's probably going to die. If he doesn't, Raid or ult, and he will. Mm -hmm. and that's where Tom Kench comes into play, to be fair, from Hard Random. It's true. The absolute defusal tool. Pretty good pick here. We'll see if it works out as the game continues, though. 21 and a half minutes in. Baron is alive. Oh, hello. Top lane time. Raid here. What are you doing here? Kira's going to ride in. That'll force a flash. Flash Walder from Kira. Looks for the stun, but doesn't find it. Raid will burn the heal. Yeah, I actually think Kira mispressed his buttons there. You don't place the wall down to block them into it and expect the Duke back. Miracle may be caught, but a teleport's going to answer here from Hard Random. It's actually Kira that makes his way back. Smurf still with that TP. But Lantern's going to get the Chiefs out. Honestly, good attempts to almost catch two different people there. Actually, both AD carries kind of getting caught. Yeah, they're, they're definitely making the right attempts here, though. I still think the Chiefs want to be in this position grouped up. Of course, the best case scenario for Hard Random is having Smurf split push 1v1. They can't put Kira in side lanes, especially with no summoners. And so they have to stay grouped, and I do think that this is the Chiefs' domain that they're now fighting in. Well, Swiffer and Ejim hanging out. Swiffer's actually going to go back. Nice little donation of the cannon creep over. And just share that gold there, thanks to the Targons. Radio back in the top lane, though. He's getting so greedy for side lane farm today. Particularly in this game. I mean, getting away with it so far, but... Well, he has no flash or heal, so... <laughs> Not getting yet. He won't get out of the next time that happens. And the dragon's about to spawn, so it's actually very foolish. They don't want to contest, obviously. By him going top lane, that was the communication, is we're not contesting this. And that's Dragon 3, which definitely opens up 4 and 5 a lot more. Not just, you know, from the obvious sequential nature that you need to take the objective on, but 3 is really the time, like, where you can strike and try and take it. Because as soon as the 4th goes down, every Dragon after that is a problem. 
Yeah, that's an easy solo there for Graves. Stats buffing up just a bit. This is the volatile lane, however. Oof. Good damage on a Swiffer. Kira getting back in there with the auto. I'm not sure anyone will die. Defensive summoners don't forget there for Swiffer. Yeah, he should be fine. Of course, the stun was on cooldown. So, the number one most important thing, as you can see, just chills. Yep, he's alive, but Rod of Ages proc for Kira as he levels up. Very healthy as the Chiefs. I'm going to take an out of turret here. Starting to make some headway. Still behind in turrets, but going to even the gold back up a little bit here. That's how you answer it, right? Raider sitting in the side lane the whole time. Just go join him. Take those turrets down as a team. You can't get caught out of position then. Swiffer keeping tabs on Kira as well helps, regardless of his health values. A yeah, good little bit of proactivity there from the Chiefs, but still looking good here. Ooh, nice from Ejim. Hooked onto a minion. That was a necessity yes, as well. If he didn't hook that minion. If Swiffer killed that minion, he was dead. And this is the power of Anivia. Kira on Anivia as well in particular. Overwhelming. Starting to feel that way. It's Radiant. Does come back with his rapid fire cannon. Another Swiffer. summoner. Yeah, has to use the flash deck because of the stun. And it's seriously just him using his spells. Oh, good wall. Curtain call in though. Swiffer wants to make a play. He goes for Kira. Huge one there as Miracle is going to take him out. But Kira maybe just dead here. He's not quite in tower range. The bullets need to be a little bit more. But Liquid Arm actually keep, eats him out of it. Swiper though is in the mix. He's going to try and lock them down. As Miracle barely lives on the back end of that one from a spear. Really close fight so far under the tower. Yeah, it's been a very close fight so far, pastry time. The Anivia being engaged on by Azir is a very curious thing. As we're back. All right, detective work time. There are two Chiefs dead and no one dead from hard random. Looks Disaster. Like the pick, looks like the pick on Kira did not work. Yeah, no, that was Tom Kench, absolutely. And like we've said this already, Tom Kench just eats the person who is being focused. Cancels his ultimate to scare them, I guess. I suppose so. Ah. Comes up pretty quickly, though. <laughs> That's a bit random. Maybe he's just, I don't know. Just give him a how you go. Trying to tell Kira something. I don't know. Kills the out for a hard random, and that'll keep them up in the, up in the lead in gold. 4k up now at this stage of the game. And starting to get the items online as well. Spirit Visage for Smurf is, I think, the real start to a lot of the issues there for old Malachi. Not that he was having a fun time earlier. But yeah, no, but I think now he's gonna have a bad time. He's also just a time. So it's also Titanic Hydra over the Ravenous, mm -hmm. which to me was less split push oriented and more I want a team fight. So whilst it will start to get worse for Swiper naturally just through the champions that they're playing, Smurf's not gonna really have the outright win of the lane. Ulti there for Licrit. Yeah, he's going bottom lane. Does he have someone with him? Oh he does! It's Kira once again. Good wall. Oh my, that's rude. Swiper just trying to juke. Just pick the right direction on the queue. Oh. <laughs> that wall lasted a long time, but Edim's there with a save for the land. That was a filthy wall. Yeah, that was really sick. Kira's got max levels in that, I believe. Would have mm -hmm. maxed at second. Yep. So around level 14, I believe, as he put two into queue. And this tower's dead. I honestly think the Anivia should have been banned. I think I agree. There you are, max wall, max E. Pretty standard Anivia stuff. We expect an Anivia player of his caliber to understand all the little things. Well, even putting two levels into the queue early and then maxing the yep. wall second as well. He just He's definitely an Anivia player. That goes without saying. His performance only boosts that further. Certainly does. A Smurf, big crit. Radius setting up the ulti. There's one. Never mind. We're done. Oh, my God. Kira blows him up instead. Now Spooks has to take the lantern out. And Kira, he's not done. He gets the wall. Now Edim's the one trapped. As Spooks gets his way over there. Crit lands and Miracle takes him out on the other end. Actually deleted. Like, Radius was barely alive in that, ma in that fight just there. He, he got his ult off. Didn't fire a bullet. If I had won, oh, did it he? got diffused though by the Tom Kench, as is custom now for this team. The Chiefs just do not have an answer. They are basically outdrafted right now. The Azir's not getting anything done. I think that should have been perhaps the Varus that we alluded to earlier as well. Quite possibly, because certainly the comp not looking Considering good. it's a Nidalee jungle as well, they've got magic damage. I don't know if that was the only exception to that. Well. Hard random continuing to pressure forward. 5,000 gold up now in this game. 10 kills to 4. It just feels like, again, every time something happens, there's just an outplay to be made. Execution for execution. Hard random are just consistently out outplaying the Chiefs. Yeah, and this to me is individual mechanical skill at the moment. It's not that the Chiefs don't have it either. Like That's the one thing they do definitely have. But when you've got the teamwork to back that up, it just shines brighter. Yeah. And like we're looking at this game and I could very easily accuse the Chiefs of not being as strong mechanically as hard random. But it's only because the other things aid to that. Yep.
And it's just been such an, another well-played game here by HR, who are maybe quickly here on day one, making a very good case for themselves. I would put the them strongest. at favourites if they win this. Such a strong-looking side so far. Still games to play, though, don't forget. And this one has play in it left as well. But hard random looking. Like they've just built up such a big lead, even though it is only 5k right now. Given that what we've seen already in the game, I'm not sure if the Chiefs can come back here, but they've certainly been in crazier situations. Swiffer just has nothing to offer. Like he engaged once, and it was on to Kira. He died for it immediately, and Kira didn't. Like Plain and simple, that's basically the name of the game at the moment for these teams. Tom Kench diffuses everything. I think Tom Kench was a master pick. Like mm. That was unbelievably smart. But then the Anivia is forcing summoner spells as well. Like One wall here. Oh, hook, snare, play in. Oh my god, Licorid. Now the TP's in. They actually might turn this around for a team fight. Great wall once again for Kira. Egypt going to get blown up there as Smurf able to take him down. Swiper TP's in and can't get through the wall. Hard random still 5v4 action. To be fair, Swift is doing a lot of damage and you need to keep your eyes on the carries of Chiefs. Oh, Miracle actually eats a slow there. Ulti out from Swift to disengage though. Smurf. Just hanging Spooks out in the front line, going in. Spook certainly is. Curtain calls up. Smurf's going to eat this damage, though. Going to make sure he takes it all for the team. Liquid, it's the last crit there. Wow. And nobody goes down. And once again, hard random. They've got the Tom Kench. We mentioned what it does. Well, it stopped Kira from dying. Yep. One more time. Even if he was to die, there was an egg, which would have then been devoured. A little bit more appropriate with the chef skin. <laughs> Certainly is. Maybe the dragon's up though. As Radius trying to 1v1 the Grays. Good juke out of it, but good flash from Radius to get out from under the ulti. Kira Kira's there. Though, swoops in with the teleport able to take him out. And now Swiper has to battle everybody. Our Swiffer, he can't get in because of another great war for Kira. And a very chaotic fight around the dragon, but once again, hard random just on top of it. Yeah, hard random. Absolutely controlling this game. Radius has not had an impact, basically. Every time he presses the R key, he's either dying or the person he's trying to kill just gets... You know, nommed away to safety. There's hard random going a bit deep. Yeah, Swiffer goes down. That's four Chiefs dead. Hard random. TP in with their Anivia. Swoop in. They claim the dragon as well. They have four dragons to zero now as well. And might even look to take this Baron out. The good news is that the Chiefs still have their inhibitor towers up. But that's about where it ends. Yeah, that's absolutely where it ends. The base isn't broken. That's their saving grace. But the Chiefs have still got... Two members available. I don't think they'll be able to defend this one outright, given that Smurf exists. Graves might die, though. Yeah, he might. He doesn't have to cut around the Baron. Squad out. Ooh, sorry, dear. Looks for another pick, but doesn't find it. You can see the gold here between these two teams. Starting to really balloon out in general. How do I know about, what, 8, 9k up already? Yeah, this is looking absolutely dire because, like, fourth drag and also everything that could go wrong for the Chiefs is absolutely going wrong but everything that could go right for hard random is even positioning in team fights to let the time Kench eat him, Kira. Like, this is a seamless game from this team. It is. Hard random. Oh, such a great day one here. Could end at 2-0, which is an excellent start to any tournament. And Kira and the Anivia once again. But I have to say, Likrit still becoming, fast becoming my favorite support player, at least for the tournament. It's two, like, not outrageous picks, but two different picks. You know, it's not the uh, Trondle Alistar Braum trio that we tend to see. We were wondering, you know, we saw his bar, we loved it. We seen the time catch, we're like, okay, is this actually what the team needs? Turns out he was right, and he's been playing it exceptionally once again. It's all that pick. It's not there for the Chiefs. Because time's always there to eat somebody. Yeah. And Smurf, he's got a nice one gauntlet now, and almost a random one's completed as well. Good luck, Maokai. Yeah. Not having a great time. Nicarit is a standout player. This base, I would say, is inevitably broken right now. You can't ult Radio. Yeah, Radio does. What are you doing? Has to heal. Tower goes down. Hook onto Kira, but I think he wants to be in. <laughs> He's going to move in. Takes half of Spooks' health off with one E. And that inhibitor's dead. Yep. And there is a chance that that inhibitor translates into a lot more control across the map. I wouldn't be surprised if Hard Random just... I was going to say go top lane. But mid, naturally, with a Tom Kench ultimate, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they'll book it. Managed to get out for an even speedier rotation. And here's Smurf, hanging out, taking a half the turret down. He might move in to finish it off here. Smurf does get hooked. Fox is up there for Regim. Play back in there as well. I but think he minds. Trundle doesn't mind at all. I was watching a Trundle tank a turret and get plus 100. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 
Liquid hooked again. Snares in there as well. Spooked actually takes out Miracle. His Liquid's going to go down as well. Double kill there is hard wow. random overextend for the first time in the game. Yeah, they get two kills again, the Chiefs, but the inhibitor, I will say, is already down. The Baron recalls will help things out, and there's nothing on the map that the Chiefs can take. Ideally, what they should do now is try and secure themselves maybe pink wards around the Dragon Pit, just so that they do have vision when that one is going to be taken, because it is number five after all. They need to start setting things up soon when it becomes available. Feels like somewhat of an affordable mistake, perhaps. But still good goal for the Chiefs to get. So they do have to hold on here in this game in what looks like a very tricky situation to navigate. Sounds speaking Spanish. Nazir is Spanish. Yeah. Sounds great. It does look. Yeah. What do you think we have Bardo? <laughs> oh, I know it's why we have Bardo. I've seen Assassinato instead of kills. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is great. It's though. more that the, sa the sound facts are in another language. It's glorious. It is glorious. Who would be the most fitting Spanish voice champion? I think Spanish guys would be pretty great. I'd love to see, hear Fiora. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would sound hilarious. I feel like that's everyone's question. Well, yeah. Makes sense, though. Smell fucked up. Maybe not. Red hit caught. Lantern has to walk all the way around the pillar. Hook lands on a smurf as well, but the rest of the team yes, are in. Red here. Just dead. As Liquid eats another one. And now Miracle just goes straight in for the kill. Swiffer does push him back with the ulti. Smurf once again going to eat the hook, but he's just happily tanking the front lines and going in. Swiper also trying to do some work there, but he gets eaten up by the Tom Kent and taken out by Kira. Hard random. Ravage down three, and looks like the game's going to win. A very impressive performance. Yeah, once again, hard random. They just show up massive in this second game. I will say a very impressive performance is the right way to describe it. Just controlled. They find one win condition. This time it was perhaps the Kira and they make it work. And again, same story we've seen. Good consistent play, good individual moments. All-star support player almost, it feels like. And Kira, two games of Anivia. I feel like after two, we know he's a big Anivia player, but surely you have to ban it away. Like, I'm sure he has other champions, but we already know his Anivia is this good. It may have been a mistake to leave it up in this game, and they made pay. Kira's teleports, Kira's individual play, his landing, everything there just was set up well. And to be fair, the rest of his team was there riding with him. Kira is the 1v1 king. That's yeah. the scary thing to me, right? Like, he, he effectively 1v1s everybody. He even won the wildcard all-star 1v1 tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this guy's a monster. You've got his best champion on the best 1v1 player that we have in potentially this entire tournament. You just keep giving it to him. Yep. Probably don't want that to happen. Probably not. And again, not to discredit, uh, not to discredit the rest of his team because they did an excellent job there as well. We can maybe kind of see why Jungle Graves is such an important pick here because once again, Spooks, he shows up to a game, picks one of his other big champions, and it's just it's not quite there for him. Yeah, and the other thing to me was the Tom Kench. Like mm. as far as I'm concerned, the Tom Kench is what put Nidalee behind, which gave Graves the advantage. And that level six mark that Graves hit was like, all right, we're just diving. There's no turret even there. Two dives. They just kept going. And that was where Chiefs really started to implode. The smallest lead for Hard Random, and they took the entire game from it. And again, it always comes down to that big team effort here, because Hard Random, even though individually they've clearly shown up with some great mechanical skill, it really just, uh, you know, it really just shows that their team play, their teleports in particular, this might be one of the better double teleport teams in the tournament, based on how we've seen them play so far. The Chiefs, unfortunately, they start their day the opposite of how Oceania usually starts, which maybe is a good sign for things to come, but 0-2 is not how any team wants to start in the tournament. And no. hard random, they'll start 2-0. Yeah, not at all. The Chiefs, they've actually shown a lot of signs of struggling at the moment in this tournament. And sure, the two teams they played against, I'm going to say arguably in the top three teams competing at this tournament, we didn't really know where the Chiefs slotted into that group. So actually, I will say makes sense that they've gone down in these games because the teams they're playing against just look phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, again, it is around Robin. They'll have to play every team, but Hard Random, I think, showing up almost surprisingly in a lot of ways, and they'll finish their day 2-0. I think we're going to have to check in with them later just to see how it goes because right now, it's the best possible start, beating INTZ and then taking out the Chiefs there for just so, such clean wins there as well. It's been probably the most impressive thing. Yeah, I think the only unfortunate thing to me is that it's not a double round, Robin, because mm -hmm. these teams only get one shot to play against each other. And they may be regretting certain picks, certain bands, certain styles that they've played the game out. They don't get an opportunity to fix that against the exact same team. No, not unless they play again, of course. But top four, there is only a cut to semis. But we're going to check in with the results of the day. Five games through our seven games for today. Once again, a serious gaming with a win. Hard random with a win there over INTZ. Supermassive, though, beating the Chiefs. It's like on 
Joker's taking out Detonation Focus Me. Then our latest result there, Hard Random beating the Chiefs. And they'll finish their day 2-0 as we look for day 2. INTZ though, still to play versus Lion. And Asuris Gaming to play Detonation Focus Me. So our last two matches of the day, pretty curious. I'll have to see how that all shakes out. But unfortunately, Oceania, they will start 0-2 and Hard Random. Good props to them. I'll start 2-0. Yeah, absolutely. I honestly, this hard random team are just never ceasing Ooh. to impress me right now. Like, that's that's a scary team to be up against. Kira's stepping up their support. Dumbledore, we've got Licorice. Yep. And we've got all of it going on here in this tournament. That that game I actually can't wait for for that exact reason because the support battle between. The Doge and Litric. I mean, it's funny. Egypt's a great support player, but I feel like he may have played the two best supports in the tournament because the performances that both his support opponents have put up today have been wonderful. And the, the level of plays that they've been making is just awesome. Yeah. I mean, we were even looking at it before when it was like this random situation. We're watching it was an Ezreal with a tear suddenly lose a winning lane against Illusion with a yep. PF sword. Then you look over who the support <laughs> is. Oh, it's Dumble Doge. He's got Ignite. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it seems all too easy. And a great win there for Hard Random. We'll have a strong finish to the uh, end of the day. But don't go too far away. As we said, we have two more matches to play. We'll throw to a break. We'll finish off the IWCI for day number one.